So electric guitar players are always talking about their favorite guitars. Whether it's the never-ending Gibson vs. Fender battle, or if you're a shredder, maybe you should check out Ibanez or Schechter guitars. Or hey, have you seen that new John Mayo PRS Silver Sky? You gotta check it out. Anyway, it seems that classical guitar players aren't really talking about their guitar and their gear in the same way as electric guitar players are. Even the average beginner or hobbyist electric guitar player can probably tell you who plays which guitars and what songs you really want for which guitars. And it seems that most classical guitar players don't do this, at least I didn't. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about five guitar makers that you should know about if you're a classical guitarist or if you're just interested in classical guitar. And I'll also be talking about guitar players that played these guitars and where you can hear them. Anyway, my name is John and welcome back to another episode of For the Classical Guitarist. If this is your first time here, I hope they like what you see. And anyway, yeah, let's get started. So before I get going with the list, I want to first say if you have any of these guitars, I am very jealous of you because as you guys are going to see, these guitars cost a lot of money. So the first guitar maker that I want to talk about is going to be, of course, Antonio Torres. He was a Spanish guitarist and guitar builder, also known as a luthier, who was born in June of 1817 and died November of 1892. And what makes him so great is that he pretty much pioneered the classical guitar to what it is today. Before him, guitars were these instruments that weren't that loud, and because of that, they were just instruments that were played by people either on the streets or in restaurants and bars trying to play for some spare change. But he was noticing a change in the musical needs for the instrument. He was noticing we needed an instrument that could be louder but also have musical depth in terms of dynamic and color. So that's exactly what he did. Now, for the people who play or have played Torres' guitar, the first one I want to talk about would be Pepe Romero because he actually owns three of them somehow. And next to that would be his brother Angel Romero and his dad Celo Romero who each own one guitar. Now besides them, the other people who play Torres' guitars would be Miguel Yobet and of course Francisco Terraga. Of course because these guitars are very old, most people don't play them and just record them and take them out on tours because that would be way too risky. However, you can hear some recordings of these guitars being played by, of course, Pepe Romero. And you can also hear a video of the whole entire LGQ playing some quartets, each playing on a Taurus guitar. Those will be linked down in the description below, so definitely check them out. It's really interesting to hear the older style of guitars and kind of how the guitars developed from there. So the next guitar luthier that I want to talk about would be Herman Hauser. Now, maybe it's just me, but when looking into this, I was a little bit confused on the whole Hauser 1, Hauser 2, Hauser 3. But what I realized is that, of course, each one of those is a different Herman Hauser. It's a father and son lineage, you could say, building guitars. And what's really cool because of that is today you can still get a Herman Hauser and it comes from the exact same lineage, even in the same workshop. So the first Herman Hauser was born in 1882 and he actually learned how to make guitars from his dad, of course, Joseph Hauser, who was a guitar maker, but he also made zithers, mandolins, and lutes as well. Anyway, the first Herman Hauser actually got noticed by Miguel Yobet and Andrew Segovia in the early 90s. And that's kind of how he got started and how the Hauser started to become a big respected name in the guitar field. Now for the second Herman Hauser, he started building guitars with his dad and started working in the shop in 1930. And by 1952, he actually took over the shop. Some people that play his guitars that are pretty well known would be people such as Andrew Segovia, Django Reinhardt, and of course, Julian Bream. A great record to check out where you can hear a Herman Hauser 2 would be on Julian Bream's The Art of Julian Bream's record. And also the pieces on there are great, so go check it out. And finally, the third Herman Hauser, who is still alive today, started building guitars, of course, with his dad, just like his dad did with his dad. Today, he's still building guitars, and you can still order a guitar from him, but of course, it's going to be very expensive, and there's going to be a long wait list. There are, of course, many big-name players who play his guitars, but the most notable would come from Pepe Romero and Andre Segovia. Now, if you're wondering if the Hauser lineage is going to continue on past him, the answer is yes. He actually has trained and works with his daughter, Catherine Hauser, on making guitars today. However, Catherine actually has her own line of Hauser guitars that she makes, but she still works as an assistant to help him build his Hauser guitars. Now, in terms of where to hear this guitar, it's said that Angel Romero played one for a while, but I'm not totally sure of which recordings he played it on. However, if you do want to hear a recording of a Hauser 3, Angel Romero actually sold his to Martha Masters, and she played it on her CD, Baroque Mindset, so check out that if you want to hear a Hauser 3. So the next guitar that I want to talk about is pretty similar to the Hauser as it's kind of a family thing, but you also might have seen it floating around as well as a brand, and that would be the Ramirez Guitars. So let me explain. So today, Ramirez Guitars are guitars that are made for people of various price points, whether it's college level students, aspiring professionals, or even concert level artists. But like any brand, it has to start somewhere. So let's go back to the beginning. So to start off, we have brothers Jose and Manuel Ramirez. Now they actually started off building guitars together, but by 1891, Manuel actually left to build his own shop, which ended up being in direct competition with his brother. 
Even though they both learned how to make guitars from the same mentor, Francisco Gonzalez, and they built their first guitars together, as builders, they were pretty different. Jose wanted to build guitars very similar to his mentor, like I said, Francisco Gonzalez, and Manuel actually wanted to make guitars more similar to the tourist design, the guy I mentioned earlier. Manuel's hope was to make guitars very similar to the Taurus design, but with some improvements, and because of this, he was even seen as the successor to Taurus. Now, what made Manuel really get noticed is he actually has guitar being played by Andre Segovia for 25 years, and that guitar today is at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City, so if you're around there, you can go see it in real life. It's said that Segovia liked his guitar so much that he actually tried to get Hauser to make an exact copy for him after Manuel passed away. So Segovia switched over to Hauser guitars, but then later on he went back to playing Ramirez guitars, this time made by Jose Ramirez III. Now, you might be wondering, how many Jose Ramirez's are there? Is it the same thing like Hauser? And yes it is, but that's probably going to be another video, so stay tuned. What I found interesting about Jose Ramirez is he actually trained some of the biggest luthiers to come after him. Also, the other interesting thing about him is he actually had a lot of people playing his guitars that weren't even primarily classical guitar players. People such as Chet Atkins, Mark Knopfler, George Harrison, and Charlie Bird. Now, in terms of classical guitar players who play his guitars, of course, you can hear his guitars being played by the Romeros, Andre Segovia, and Narcisco Yepes. And also, in terms of where you can hear these guitars, there's so many people playing them on so many different recordings, so I'm just going to put some links down below. Most of them will be videos done by GSI, so definitely check those out. The next luthier is what many people consider to be like the Rolls Royce of classical guitar, and that would be the Australian luthier, Greg Smallman. So Greg Smallman was born in 1947, and he's really known for taking the guitar and just adding a few different things to it. The biggest one is he was one of the first ones to experiment with the lattice brace on the guitar, and also having a guitar with a much heavier and thicker body, but a very light top. Now many big name players play his guitars, people such as Ben Verder and David Tannenbaum, but the most notable of course would be John Williams. And John Williams even said in an interview that once he got his first Smallman he hasn't played anything else, and I'm pretty sure that still holds true today. So in terms of where you can hear them, pretty much any Williams record recorded past 1980, and that includes live performances as well, so definitely go check some of those out. The final luthier on this list would be the American builder Thomas Humphrey who was born in 1948 but sadly passed away in 2008. And why he's on this list is because he was one of the first big name luthiers to start experimenting with guitars and start breaking out of that traditional Taurus and Hauser design. Now he wasn't one of the first and only ones to ever do this but he definitely helped pioneer it and make the guitar what it is today with some of the modern adaptations that you see, which we'll get to in a second. Basically, he just had this idea of making the guitar louder and be able to sustain more. He was so set on this idea that he even considered putting a little amplifier inside of the guitar. Now, obviously that never happened, but he was thinking about it. So after a few tries, he made what he liked to call his Millennium model. And you know, he was making pretty good guitars early on, but it was that model that really put his guitars on the top of being one of the best guitars that people could play. Pretty much everyone wanted to play them. People playing his guitars were guitars such as the Assad duo, Elliot Fisk, Ben Verdi, and Sharon Isbin, just to name a few. What I find pretty funny and interesting is that he actually made all of his guitars in an apartment in New York City. That was his shop, so pretty cool. Anyway, you can hear most of his guitars on recordings by the guitarist Lily Ashfer, and you can hear it on probably most of his CDs. I'll link some of them down below, but definitely go check them out because he really changed the way the guitar is, and people are still playing his guitars today because of that power and sustain that they get. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope that you guys learned something from this video. I wanted to try something a bit different, something that was always puzzling me for a little while, so I hope you enjoyed it as well. Anyway, if you guys are new here, like I said, feel free to check out some other videos of mine. And if you like what you see, I hope that you consider subscribing to my channel. And yeah, just stay tuned for more videos. I want to make more videos about classical guitar and all the things that I wish existed when I was going to school for guitar. So hopefully that's what you find helpful here as well. Anyway, until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.